So they've told me we have a special guest here today. I don't have a clue because apparently when I open the box, I will know who it is. So let's get right to it. Okay, I, I do know who it is. This gem, I'm super excited because I've always adored it online, but um, I've never actually seen it in person. This is a gem in the President's Collection. It's a green barrel. It has a custom cut. But first, I think I think I know who our guest is. So is it Tim Matthews? Well, you can't have a President's Collection episode without the President. So Tim Matthews is JTV's President and CEO. He is a lawyer by trade. He is a fellow of the Gemological Association of Great Britain. He is a gemologist accredited by the Gemological Institute of America. But my favorite credential of his would have to be dad to yours truly and to five other very lucky kids. So let's bring him on here and talk all about the gems in the President's Collection. Okay, so you've been on here before, but why don't you say hi to YouTube? Hi there, I'm uh, Tim Matthews, President and CEO of Jewelry Television, and I'm so excited to be here with my daughter, Rebecca, to talk about some of the special items in the President's Collection. Tell us a little bit, for those who don't know, about the President's Collection, how it got started, why you started it, what, what is its significance at JTV? What I wanted to do is have something for everybody in the collection. Uh, the collection is not just high-end gems, although there are many very high-end gemstones in the collection, but also it consists of many very affordable pieces that are very special pieces. Each piece has been hand-selected by me. I've looped it, I've, I've tried to understand the origins of it, talked to the cutters involved, maybe I, I bought it from a miner. There's always some sort of a story behind each of the pieces, and I love that aspect of it. But these are all special pieces at a wide range of price points that people can afford. I would be remiss to, to leave out the fact that my Blue Dom Fluorite necklace and bracelet are some of the few jewelry items in the collection. So we have a few jewelry items, but most are gemstones. Right. Well, and the Blue John is one of my favorites. I actually was in the Blue John mining region in Derbyshire, England, uh, when I bought those pieces, and it's one of my favorite gemstones. Let's get to the, the specimens on hand. So this is a green barrel. A gigantic green barrel, Ooh. 167 carats well, that, of green barrel. Yeah, let's, this, I see, is not a, a cut that one would see very often in the gemstone world or in a, an ordinary piece of jewelry. It's a custom prism shape. And I see that it has three large facets on the bottom side, and then it has these concave bubbles on it. That's correct. That's one of the mysteries of this piece. We, we know it was cut in Germany, which has a centuries long tradition of cutting. This is an example of fantastic precision cutting, but not just precision cutting, also artistic, creative, kind of right brain type of cutting as well. It's a, it's a free form uh, shape in many respects, even though it's prismatic, it has grooves on the sides. It has these bubble shapes that have been carved into the sides as well. And so it's actually a piece of art as much as a precision cut gemstone. Well, I think that's one of the really interesting things about lapidary art. You have to be good with math and you have to be good with angles and knowing how cutting affects how the piece turns out. However, it takes such artistry. Like you're right, it is such a combination of left brain and right brain because you you have to have that creative vision behind it as well as the the precision of cutting. And people don't really understand also how much time it takes to cut. Uh, because involved in the cutting process is planning, marking, uh, rough forming, cabbing, or what, whatever you're going to do, depending on the type of shape that you're trying to come up with. The, the real art comes in visualizing from a rough piece of stone with the prismatic cut. You can see right through the material and you can see the clarity. The clarity becomes one of the stars of this piece of gem material. You can see that no matter which facet of the prism you look through and you can appreciate the fact that this is just a, an amazingly clear piece, which by the way is interesting with barrel because you know, the dark form of green barrel we all know is emerald, right? So emerald is colored by chromium. Well, this lacks the chromium that is required to give it that deep, rich green color saturation. 
but it's nonetheless a very beautiful gemstone. And what it does that Emerald doesn't do is it provides you a clarity that's amazing. All right, let's take a look here. Aha. I love this stone. Yes, I love this too. So what we have is a very special Savorite from Campbell Bridges. This particular item is almost six carats. It's 5.98 carats in total weight. It's a rectangular cushion cut. Savorite is a very special uh, item. Campbell Bridges, as you may know, was the one who really discovered Savorite garnet in that border between Tanzania uh, and Kenya. Savorite is a beautiful, beautiful green gemstone, uh, very free of inclusions, but it's also very, very rare. And uh, this, this gemstone is not to be found in other parts of the world. And so when you buy a Savorite, you know you have something very special. It's also true that Savorite does not come in big sizes. So when you start talking about three carats, four carats, five carats, you're talking about enormous value in a gemstone. So this might be one of the smaller items in the presence collection at a six carat stone, but yet it's probably one of the priciest on a per carat basis, mm -hmm. simply because this size is extremely unusual. So we have something that's very special here. Now, what's also special about this stone is the way this is inscribed. And this is, uh, this is really fun for me. Bruce Bridges decided that he would inscribe the girdle of these stones with some information. And he only does this though with the more valuable stones. He determines whether it gets inscribed with the special inscription, and that's based upon the rarity and value of the, of the item. This one is extremely vivid and a beautiful color, part of the collection inscribed specially, and hence, uh, a rare stone with a lot of value. Okay, I think it's my turn. It is your turn. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. Okay, so this is a rutilated quartz cut by Alexander Kreiss, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. So the interesting thing about lapidaries is they all have a certain style. They all have certain gemstones they usually work with or commonly work with. And this is super identifiable from its style and from from the stone. So this is a two box event. Oh, I like two boxes. And then box number and two. And then a sunstone. Sunstones are gorgeous. Mined here in the US of A in Oregon. This indeed is cut by Alexander Kreiss. He's a marvelously talented uh, young man. Uh, his family has been, uh, from Germany, has been in the lapidary arts for 500 years. It does a lot of freeform cutting, a lot of styles and shapes that you'll just not see anywhere else. In this case, he's taken two completely different approaches to cutting. You can see this kind of modified pear shape uh, in the case of the Oregon sunstone, and you see some sort of a geometric type of shape with this rutilated quartz. The other thing here to note is that one is an inexpensive material. The rutilated quartz is typically a very inexpensive type of gem material, whereas the Oregon sunstone is a very valuable material, uh, typically. Uh, much more inherent value in the, in the rough than would be a quartz material. So he's cutting two different qualities of materials, so to speak. A lot of people use quartz because it is relatively inexpensive. And so the risk factor when you're, when you're making a unique design like this is a little bit lower from a value perspective. Both of these are included stones, which an inclusion is something that's included within the stone that occurred while the stone was growing, typically. Can you explain what rutilated quartz means? Usually a clear quartz, maybe a champagne color, but there are rutile needles in it. And rutile is a type of titanium and it appears in long, straight, almost straw-like patterns. The uniqueness of the pattern will usually determine the type of the cut of the stone because sometimes it's a fan shape, sometimes it's a cross shape, sometimes it's some sort of other geometric state, uh, shape, but the rutile uh, appearance within the stone is going to be a very strong influential factor in how that stone is cut. If you've never owned a piece of related quartz, there are lots of ways to buy pieces uh, more affordably than others. Uh, you don't have to buy a piece that's cut by a famous lapidary like this. 
in order to own a piece of related quartz. We have a lot of selections of related quartz on our website. But if you get your loop or a microscope and look at the rutile needles, you'll see how perfectly formed they are and how they do fall into certain patterns. Uh, they're almost always in patterns if you, if you notice uh, the clusters, almost like a sheaf of wheat, for example. Uh, you know, it will be in a characteristic shape and you'll see that within the gemstone, as the material was being formed, this rutile was also being uh, formed as well. So that's, uh, that's, that's really fun. And it's also very bright, it's shiny, mm -hmm. uh, it's very metallic looking. So it's, it's unmistakable when you look at it through a loop or a microscope and it's all, always fun to see. We also have copper platelets in the other stone. And in the sunstone, you have millions and millions of copper platelets that are reflecting light. And it's producing an effect called Schiller. And these stones are valued for the Schiller effect that they display. Schiller is a type of aventurescence. So you can see the stone from one angle and it will look like one thing and from another angle it will look kind of different. That's right, think, think mirrors. So copper platelets are like little tiny mirrors of copper embedded in the sun, millions, literally millions of them. And so they're only going to reflect light in, in certain ways if they're positioned correctly relative to the light. Well, and I think that the way that he's cut this is, it's like a teardrop pear shape, but it's kind of leafy. And it's like, it reminds me of fall. It's like the orange and the red and the yellows. And it's just, it has that warm fall feel to me. It does. I'll make another analogy then to a painter, okay? Uh, it's one thing to buy the paint Maybe you buy it for $15 a gallon or whatever. It's another thing to be able to put it on the canvas. That's true. That's such a good analogy. I like that. So this is a big box. It's still light, but it's big. Let's see what's inside. Ah, we Ooh. have two stones inside. A lemon quartz. Wow, with really a strong yellow greenish yeah. color. That, that looks radioactive almost. Uh, it, it does almost. And then we have praiseolite which is oh, another course. form of quartz. A pear-shaped praiseolite, which is in a kind of mint green color, which is kind of fun. This one is cut by Daryl Alexander, and guess what? So is this one. Hey. So we get to talk about Daryl a little bit. I love Daryl, he's, he's a great individual, enormously talented, and talking about winning awards, he just wins them all. I mean, he, he's constantly winning awards or being published in national journals like Vogue. He is really a cutter's cutter. So two types of quartz. We have a lot of quartz, which is so fun to show the variety that quartz can provide in color and inclusions. Well, let's talk about the lemon quartz. Here again, we have a very large piece. It's over 34 carats. It's a, it's a round shape, very, very deep color. There's a, a greenish cast to this yellow. This is not a bright, vivid yellow. This is more of a, a darker hue with the green undertones, I think. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, a, a, an amazing cut. One of the things that we know about the best cutters is that they are both left-brained and right-brained. So what I mean by that is that they're right-brained in the sense that they're creative and artistic and, and they see things that we don't see. The left brain part of the lapidary science is that you have to be precise. And when you're cutting something in a shape that is a regular shape, like a round, a round brilliant diamond, it needs to have a certain number of facets. Those facets need to point correctly. That is, they need to align correctly so that they all come to proper points uh, on the pavilion and the crown. And, and that requires a lot of thinking because it, it requires cutting at precisely the correct angles to get get those facets to point. And so to kind of illustrate this point, I wanted to show you something that uh, uh, that is one of my favorite machines or an output of one of my favorite machines. This is a this is a report from something called a Saren machine. And a Saren machine will actually take a gemstone and it will give us a three-dimensional wireframe model of that gemstone and show us where the facets are. And if you look at this item, th this is this is the yellow quartz. We put this in the Sarah machine yesterday and you can see the regularity of the facets that are cut here. And there, there are a couple of irregularities which are pointed out where there's supposed to be one facet, but there are extra facets. Mm -hmm. That may be because of the nature of the inclusions in the stone. 
maybe one facet had to be cut slightly deeper than the other facets and so it messed up the geometry of the stone uh, but one of the things that's beautiful about someone who is a real scientist as a lapidary is that they get these facets to point in a proper way and you can see for the most part on the pavilion side of this lemon quartz see how perfectly all these facets are aligned where the, the points, the angles are all regular, they're all identical. And that's really fun for me to see. And this is done by hand. I think that's another thing we forget. So many gemstones are, are, are cut by machines these days. Yeah, that's true. And, and so it's special to have something that's cut by hand. It's a meticulous, painstaking process. It's very precise in a case like this. Uh, there, there's not there's not room to be free forming a round cut uh, of this nature. So uh, Daryl has to be very precise when he makes his cut. Speaking of another one, praiseolite, which is it's actually kind of a similar color to green barrel in some ways. It has like that lightly saturated minty green almost. Correct. And Praiseolite is a customer favorite at JTV, by the way. Uh, we've, through the years, we've sold many, many carrots of Praiseolite. Customers seem to love it. It's a, it's a very gentle, soothing, pastel uh, tone of quartz that uh, is a customer favorite. Knowing the story, appreciating what went into the gemstone, understanding the rarity of the material is something that uh, the outside world or the onlooker, the spectator can't really appreciate in the same way that you as the owner and the wearer of the jewelry can feel and experience and know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, you're right, this is, for example, looking at this praiseolite, this is a beautiful piece. Look at all the facets on the back of this mm -hmm. piece. Uh, the, it's been cut with many facets on the pavilion in order to really make it sparkle from the table. It would actually be a very stunning piece in a pendant, but in a way, it's also, it, it has a simplistic kind of beauty to it as, as well. And so uh, an onlooker would admire it and would appreciate it, for its looks, but would surely probably not appreciate the fact that it was cut by a master gem cutter. So if you look at the collection we have here, let's point at our favorite at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, maybe that's price related. We tend to have favorites that we would aspire to have that are up there in price. Uh, that's not necessarily affordable for everybody. But again, that's why the collection exists to bring that to the market as well as this to the market mm -hmm. both of uh, both of which for different kinds of collectors or different kinds of designers or aficionados are really wonderful additions to their collections or designs or to their jewelry so uh, a range of prices uh, a range of different materials but in all cases something special that we've curated just for our customers mm -hmm. but i will have to say the lemon quartz is definitely my second favorite. I think that color is so unique. The cutting is just, I mean, over 120 facets is just phenomenal. So that would definitely be be my second favorite. But but the the Savrite Garnet from the Campbell Bridges signature collection is very nice. Yeah, the Praiseolite too, again, it's a JTV customer uh, favorite. And it also is one of my favorites because I'm quite fond of that minty or pastel green color. Uh, for the same reason, I'm fond of uh, this barrel, this green barrel piece, which it's just a very pleasing, soothing type of color. And this piece, this praiseolite, would look fantastic in a set piece of jewelry, mm -hmm. like a pendant. Fantastic, very sophisticated, uh, a certain kind of simple elegance. Uh, you as the wearer would know, of course, uh, that it's a very special cut piece by Daryl Alexander, but nonetheless, it kind of exudes that sophistication that we that we like to like to see in the jewelry design.
we're going to include all of the links to these items below for you to check them out. You can also go to jtv.com slash vault for a link directly to the President's Collection to see everything that we have there for you. Thank you so much again for coming on the show today. We're so thrilled to have you. Do you want to say any parting words to our viewers? I am thrilled to be here and to share this wonderful collection. And if you have any questions, please, please write. We love to hear from our customers and our friends, and we are always happy to answer questions that people may have. Yes, you know, we're actual family, but the JTV family is another type of family, and we love to hear from you. Definitely let us know what you wanna see more of. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell so you won't miss out on future episodes, and thanks for watching. Thank you very much.